Okay, hi all. So um, today we'll be looking at the newest version of Clip Studio. Specifically, we'll talk about dual brushes. At the end of the video, I'll also go quickly through some of the other big changes Clip Studio received in the last few months. This update comes with major changes to the brush tools. We're having a new dual brush thing and we're having an update to the default brushes as well. That means the initial brush types, the pen, pencil, brush, blend and decoration subtools have been improved. Also completely new subtools have also been added and they make use of the new dual brush and color jitter functions. Uh, the new brushes will be added automatically when you update Clip Studio. However, the old brushes that have been improved will not update unless you do it manually for some reason. So from the menu at the top left of the subtool palette, select add from default and then add them in one by one. I don't know why it's like this. All right, now let's take a quick look at the new brushes they've added. I've brought them all into one folder, but you should find that you already have them if you look at your pen folder, pencil folder, and so on. Uh, they are all using the dual brush thing, although it can be somewhat hard to notice at first. Uh, but for example, the zipper is literally two brushes that each do one line of the zipper teeth thing. Teeth? I have no idea what they're called. These things are called teeth in Romanian, although that's a little creepy to imagine. Uh, so what a dual brush does is it's literally two brushes that you use to paint at the same time. And that's not all, you can also change how the brushes interact with each other and I'll show you some of the settings that I find are most useful. So in direction here, if you select normal, this is what I said before, you paint with two brushes at the same time, two normal brushes. As you can see, we have a standard round brush and then we have a spray brush added on top. Now I'll mention that painting with two brushes at once can erase the problem of using double the processing power of your device. So in case you experience some lag, you can go to stroke here and increase the gap both for the first and second brush. And if you're still having problems, just use smaller brushes. All right, now about our brush. One way to make this interesting would be to change the pen pressure controls of just one of the two brushes. For example, here you see I changed the particle size of the second brush to have pen pressure. Back to the direction settings and here I'm really not sure why it's called direction, but yeah, the direction is the way the brushes interact. <clears throat> I couldn't find a good explanation to what apply RGB value does exactly, but it's definitely important. So what I did instead is I tested all the settings and created a spreadsheet. The link is available in the description. So as you can see, here are the different direction settings and here is what happens if RGB is on and if it's off. I have marked in green the five combinations that I find are most distinct and most useful. I also included some quick definitions to what the different blend modes do in case you're not familiar with them. <clears throat> I will pause here to make a note. I got these results by mixing brushes that have a grayscale alpha, meaning that the tip of the brush will only use the selected color. If you use brushes that have a multicolored alpha, like so, you can get a much larger variety of effects. However, for me, as I'm mainly a painter, literally all the brushes I use have a normal gray alpha. The chart I created is more useful for my needs, but if you're someone who uses this type of brushes for effects and decorations and such, then you'll prefer using this chart here instead. So the normal option is what we talked about before. Just two normal brushes getting used at the same time. With multiply and apply RGB off, you can paint with a second brush while using the first brush as a mask. So the first brush doesn't paint, it just gives you the shape inside which you're allowed to paint with the second brush. With add glow and apply RGB on this time, you paint with your first brush while the second brush gets added on top 
as if you had an add glow layer clipped onto the layer of the first brush. Of course, that's just how it looks. There are no additional layers involved in this process. That's just the best way I can explain what's happening. If you're not familiar with blending modes, basically this creates a glow effect by making the areas where it's applied not only brighter, but also more saturated. So the effect of this blending mode only applies onto the first brush. It doesn't apply on the rest of the drawing, even if it's on the same layer. All right, now with subtract and RGB off, you paint with your first brush while your second brush is erasing inside it. This can potentially create some very cool effects. For example, I used it on this brush. I gave it a dual brush that's a spray and I used it to cut out a few pieces of the first one here and there. And what this does for me is that now I have a brush that looks different every single time. This was impossible to create with a previous brush engine. A lot of good artists started using this sort of dual brush and so I was feeling down that Clip Studio didn't have it until now. And it's something I definitely see myself using with every brush from now on because it's simple and it makes the brush look interesting. Lastly, we have overlay with RGB off. What this does is it paints with both brushes, but the second one appears only inside the first one. Depending how you use it, sometimes it's very hard to see the second brush. I find that if you reduce the density of the first brush, then the second one becomes more visible. Uh, this doesn't work with the opacity, only the density. Uh, so to create a dual brush, what you want to do is you pick a normal brush and then you go to settings here and then to here where it says number two brush shape and you activate the dual brush and now you have a dual brush. Select the direction according to what we discussed before and then choose the brush size and you can click link to main brush so that when you increase the size of your brush, the secondary brush increases as well. Here you have most of the settings you have on normal brushes and you can adjust them all individually. And as I said before, you can have entirely different ways that pen pressure affects the two brushes. You could, for example, paint with one brush and then when you increase the pressure, paint with another brush. Like have one brush transform into another. Now, one thing I noticed is that there are no ink settings. And on the main brush, the ink settings are deactivated, specifically the color mixing. So for now, we don't have the option to make dual brushes into blending brushes. I really hope they add this soon. Like if you've seen my other Clip Studio Paint videos, you will know I like to constantly switch between having color mixing on and off all the time while painting. Watercolor Edge and a few other features are deactivated as well. But I'm sure these will be easy enough to implement in a later update, so I'm not too concerned for now. Uh, on the positive side, Color Jitter has been added. Having this is very nice for creating vibrant colors and adding variety to the brushwork. So, let me show you the brushes I created so far. This one is the brush you saw before. It's pretty much an improved version of one of the brushes I use all the time when painting. You can have this one for free. The link is in the description. The other ones, this one makes water drops. This one has this interesting moving texture that follows the direction of the brush. Like the little brush strokes inside the brush are also going in the same direction. So it's kind of like it's move like, yeah. This one is similar with a more bubbly texture. This is an ink brush that splashes when you press hard. I think that's pretty cool. This one is a glowing pen. It works best with medium colors, not too bright or too dark. And this one is another useful painting brush, this time a lot, a lot softer. I imagine using this one to paint, for example, skin tones. It also has a small amount of color jitter, so yeah. And then there's this brush that bursts into bubbles when the pressure is released. Uh, so yeah, these, these other brushes, I'll include them as a bonus to the brush pack that I sell over on DeviantArt. If you already bought it, you should find the new brushes in that same folder. 
So before we end, I'll mention a few other important changes I noticed in the last few Clip Studio Paint updates. You can now adjust the brightness and contrast of textures. There are also new texture blend modes that have been added here, so overlay, color dodge, color burn, hard mix, and height. I know some artists like to use height in other programs, so maybe try it out. If you're doing web comics, Clip Studio now supports that. It lets you create those long pages and cuts them for you. So that's a big time saver, like I remember going through a lot of confusion to figure out how to format webcomics in the past and now Clip Studio does it for you. Uh, you can now record time-lapse videos, which I must say it's amazing because I work on this music video project where I use painting time-lapses that I get from Procreate in order to like match the time-lapse with the music and create some artistic effects. And that was impossible to do before in Clip Studio, like I couldn't record the screen before in a way that it doesn't catch all the movements I make around the canvas, all the zooming in and out. And yeah, all that makes the time-lapse replay is extremely chaotic. And now if you use this setting, it just completely ignores that. It just records the entire canvas and you just see the changes appear. All right, next thing is you can now import Photoshop brushes, like .abr stuff. And lastly, a teamwork feature has been added where you can share a project with other people. You can't work on a page with someone else at the same time, but like if you're making a manga or webtoon, I can see how cool it is that you can have other people do line art, coloring, text, whatever and see the project update as soon as they're done. You don't need to be sending files back and forth. I imagine it can be cool for other projects as well. I don't know many people who use Clip Studio, so I can't exactly test this out today, uh, but I'll drop an invitation link to my team in the description. It's only active for 24 hours, so ask for a new link in the comments if that one is dead. Uh, so yeah, join me there and have access to this project and just draw me a stickman or something and let's see how it works. We might end up making something nice, I don't know. So that's about it, thanks for making it to the end. Uh, I have two other Clip Studio tutorials you might like and... And yeah. Oh, I just gonna say it's pretty late in the evening as I'm recording this and I I have to edit the entire thing tonight and post it and make a thumbnail and description and yeah. <sighs>